All right, chat. Hey, we are going to now watch the season 12, 13, and 14. These did a big video today showcasing all the new stuff coming out. I will say I do have a slight indication of what's in it um, just from, you know, various sources going through for a while. But um, this is my first time watching the actual video. So this is going to be a genuine first watch with just a little bit of spoilers, I suppose. The Sea of Thieves 2024 preview event, where we're going to give you your first look at some of the exciting features coming to Sea of Thieves this year. We are going to share information around what's coming in seasons 12 and 13, as well as even further into the future, okay. with a sneak peek behind the curtain on season 14. So grab a grog and get ready for adventure. As so all the way, so just even starting, I saw skeletons on boats. I just saw people running up a, a tightrope, and I saw a hook shot. Okay, interesting. Let's see. Feel some of the incredible bounty of features headed to Sea of Thieves in 2024. All right. Sea of Thieves is a pirate sandbox adventure game where what? players create Hold on. What? stories together. And in the world of Sea of Thieves, there are tools and items that may seem simple on the surface, but when they're in the hands of real players who are playing in their own way and bringing their Fuck creativity, outfits. it really showcases that the sandbox is more than the sum of its parts as it creates these memorable stories. This year, in 2024, Air Focus is on giving you more tools more possibilities and with that freedom out on the waves give you the possibility to have these amazing moments and really changing up the core moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of the sandbox the kind of main aims for season 12 are about mixing up the meta and how players enjoy all of the different aspects of sea of thieves so as part of season 12 we're going to be adding two new weapons and three new tools for players to use an area we haven't really delved into since launch is adding new weapons to the game new weapons that give you new tactical choices and strategies out there on your adventures so in season 12 we're going to be adding the double barrel pistol and throwing knives. Okay. The double barrel flintlock is a new type of- All right, listen. We'll see what they do, because I don't know what like the damage values on this stuff. I don't know what it's gonna be for like the double barrel or the throwing knife. But for me, as a sneaky player, right off the bat, the idea of a throwing knife is very cool. Um, let's see how they implement it. Pistol weapon where you can fire two shots individually before you need to reload, or you can charge them together and release them at once for a more powerful shot. We wanted to kind of create this new weapon archetype that's a bit shorter range, but a faster fire rate, but perhaps not as powerful or damaging as, as the flintlock pistol. But then it has those kind of blunderbuss like qualities as well, where you can do the charge shot to release. Okay, so you can do both. Now that guy two tapped that guy. Does that mean that the each shot does 50 damage or did the calculations not get actually added right? Let's see. It's two pellets at the same time. Accompanying that okay, so double that... barrel flintlock with another weapon like the- So that guy got double barrel the right time. there, right? This is a double barrel shot. He Accompanying that double barrel Flintlock with another weapon like the Cutlass, for example, for a finishing blow can lead to a fast time to kill for a player to be able to quickly take down a target. Season 12 also brings in the throwing knives as a weapon. Now these can be used as a melee Look item. They have a light and a heavy melee action, but they can also be thrown and used at range as well. You can use it to kind of like stab players with like a quick attack, but that doesn't do much damage. Or you can charge it to like pull it into this kind of more oh. dangerous stabbing motion. Uh, that will slow the player's yeah, movement cool. down and give this like really high damage attack for if you like sneak up behind players. And then finally, it has the ability to kind of 
flip the knife over, catch it, and then throw it at distance against players, which, again, kind of feels like a trick shot, and they'll do a lot of damage. That's as well. sweet, when but I need to throw some damage a knife, And if you miss, you can actually go in the world and it'll stick into any of the geometry, and you can just pull it out, and then it'll replenish your ammo. So I That's think personally, sweet. for me, this is really good because sometimes I miss, as I'm sure some of us do. Uh, so you can then just go ahead and pick it up again. So you get these wonderful moments where a pirate might throw a knife at you, but then you can retrieve that knife and throw it back to them. So it'll really mix up That's the really kind cool. of combat scenario like you can expect out in the world and when boarding other ships. Yeah, so that's cool. I would like to see some damage values on those, and I can almost guarantee you that they are not said what they are in here. So I'm going to go ahead and just say that's going to be something we're going to need to see for ourselves. The knife seems sweet, just conceptually. I guess the question is going to be, though, are those throwables? One. Two, I know they said you could sneak up on somebody and stab them. Is that going to do an absolute ton of damage, or am I still better just blunderbussing somebody? If you can't one-shot them by sneaking up on them, when you could do it with a blunderbuss, is that worth? And. If the double barrel can't two tap, what is the what is the like what's the meta running that weapon at all? Obviously, if it two tapped really fast, then that doesn't make any sense. But I don't know. Maybe there'll be some different um, maybe there'll be some different weapon combos. I'm trying in my head. It might just be too early to think about it. What you might do with a double pistol? What you would run with that? You could probably just blunder snipe. Honestly, it might turn into a scenario where you're running double pistol and blunder snipe. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'll have to see what the damage values are. Like I said, both seem pretty sweet. I'm glad they're adding new weapons. I think that that's the right call. We'll have to see what the meta is. The weapons are cool. I'm glad they're adding weapons finally. I think that's sweet, but how viable it'll be, or it will just be something fun. We'll figure it out. New tools in season 12, the wind caller, the scatter shot and the bone caller. With the scatter shot, the way that it's different to a standard cannonball is it's a collection of four cannonballs, but they're much smaller. They Great have shot. a much shorter fall off in range so, and a really widespread allowing you to hit a target with multiple projectiles at the same time. And it does really small amounts of damage to the ship, just like a level one size hole. So like really quick for players to repair, but it can kind of overwhelm a crew quite quickly. Basically, if you get up close with the scatter shot and you can get a few onto your enemy, they're going to have a lot of holes and they're going to have a pretty bad time. What it will do is really eat up an opponent's resources. They'd need to use more wood to repair the many holes that the scatter shot puts in. Well, that's just false because you have unlimited resources. Now. But I get his idea. You have like a thousand planks in two seconds, but I get it. Um, the question is, is do those compound? So when you shoot the scatter shot in the same spot, does it increase the size? Or is it just like effectively only a tier one hole? It looks cool though. Into the hole. So the bone caller is an awesome new throwable that players can wield and they can throw that on the floor and when it smashes, all these kind of bones come out and then skeletons spawn around the player in allegiance okay. to them and they'll actually fight beside the player against the enemy players okay. and enemy AI. Now you might not be going straight for just a normal cannonball or a, or a chain shot. You might in fact go straight for the bone caller so you can have some skellies that are on your side on that ship sort of messing things up for that crew. You could use fire to fight fire. So if somebody shoots a bone caller across the sea at your ship and they spawn in. If you have your own bone caller, you could throw that down on the deck and have your own skellies go and fight those uh, to take them out for you so that you... Chat, okay. I think that this is sweet and I like that it changes it. Sweaty players are going to hate that so much. It's going to be hilarious and that's funny to me. I think it's going to change everything a lot because it's going to really change like the boarding mechanic especially with some of this other stuff i just saw it's going to change the boarding it's going to change the weapon meta like think of think if you're like a double gun crew and someone like spawns 
eight skeletons on your ship and then you're boarding it could get cra it's going to get crazy that that alone is going to really change the game in a huge way it's going to be interesting to see what that does cuz you you it's going to make the skill ceiling way higher too because you're going to have to deal with everything i listen like i said chat before we get into some more of this stuff this game is 6 years old i am all for all of the wacky like crazy mix-ups like if they want to add something weird like that or like man i don't like it or people like it who cares let them just cook let them cook on it because this game it needs to be spiced up so i'm all for it just make it nuts change everyone's you know approach to combat like just let it roll i'm okay with that so cool let's keep rolling you don't have to i mostly play solo and to be able to spawn literally anything that is friendly to my cause while i'm playing is a massive uh, positive so i'm kind of looking forward to that and i'm sure that other players will find ways to make use of it as well the Windcaller is a new horn-shaped shell that players can blow into to summon the power of the winds. So imagine the scenario that you're heading fully into the wind and you're either chasing someone or you're trying to get away from someone. Now you can use this tool to blow wind into your sails and go even beyond full billow in speed. Players can also use it to kind of knock players back off their ship or on land so they can kind of target a player, blow into the wind collar, and it will throw them back into the air. You can use it as a means of propulsion for yourself in the water, but also for uh, rowing boats. So you can either use it while you're in the water swimming and you'll blast along like a really fast water boatman, or you can stand on a rowing boat and blast it out of the back like a, a speedboat, basically. You can put out fires and you can do it quickly. So you can just essentially walk around your entire ship. I like that. On fire and just put out all the fires as you walk around. And they can even use it to like That's actually stop sweet. their fall damage. Like say you're falling a great distance and you use the wind caller below your like Yo, your this fall, thing so is like, sweet. Well. Okay, they there really like thought a, about a this. a finite charge for how long the wind caller can last for. So you have That's to use sweet. it wisely. Yo, hang on. I want to watch it again. I'm sure that other players will find way. Beyond. Okay, so a couple questions about this one. One, how easy is it to get? Two, can you dive with it to another server? Three, I can't think. Kind of target ladder uh, guard with it. Them. So you can either that's funny. use it I while you're in the hilarious. water swimming and you'll blast along like a really fast water boatman. Or you can stand on a rowing boat and blast it out of the back like uh, a speedboat, basically. You can put that's out so fires cool. and I you like can do that. it quickly. So you can just essentially I like how they around. made this such a multi-tool thing. Like they, you first you're thinking, okay, it's going to just make the sails go, right? But then they only they also did it for swimming, rowboats, fire, and fall damage, and player knockback. Like that's actually a really well thought out thing. Your entire ship is caught on fire. Yeah, and that's cool. I like that. That's cool. I like that. All right, zip lines. Season 12 also introduces zip lines onto several of the islands around Sea of Thieves. So you may have seen these as they debuted in the Monkey Island Tall Tales, and they're a really fun and exhilarating way to traverse. So it's really cool to be able to bring those to the wider Sea That's of cool. Thieves world. Yeah, I like that. So we've been looking across all the islands of the Sea of Thieves and looking at the most ideal places to kind of mix up the traversal opportunities uh, within all of the islands to add these zip lines across them. So we've added zip lines to like the outpost to get down to your ship quickly. We've added them to the skeleton forts that allow you to kind of zip line between two positions to kind of escape the skeletons or get close to them when they first spawn. Or just general kind of zip lines across the islands for like fast traversal and moving. Is this the new harpoon the chat? Quickly. You're just going to be you're going to be on islands just seeing crab lords going off zip lines, not playing the game. They're like, yes, and they're just going to climb up the thing 50 times. I'm going to be tucked watching somebody do 78 zip lines. Well, on Ancient Spy Outpost now, you've got to clunk down some cliffs in order to get to your ship. Now you'll be able to just go and get on the zip line and go flying all the way down to the jetty next that's to your cool. ship. That's cool. Like, that's awesome. That's really cool So alongside cool adding completely brand new tools to the Sea of Thieves sandbox, there's also the opportunity for us to go back and add completely brand new functionality to existing tools. So another cool new feature that we're adding for Season 12 is the ability to balance on harpoon lines. So you can shoot that harpoon line at another ship or another island and then jump onto it and then like balance across. Depending on the angle in which you fire the harpoon, it'll either be like 
too steep to climb up it, but if you're on the other end, you can actually jump on the harpoon line and like slide Yo, down that's really sick. quickly back to your ship. We're really confident this will lead to some really inventive player boarding tactics out there in the sandbox, as well as giving you new yeah, ways really cool. to traverse the I like that. With all this that we're adding in season 12, it gives players more opportunities to create those stories as we're really enriching the sandbox of every session. So we're always really excited to add new tools and mechanics to Sea of Thieves, but we're always mindful that we want to make sure that the game's health is in a really good position as well, that the integrity of Sea of Thieves is there for our players. And since we're adding new weapons into Sea of Thieves, we're very mindful that we want to ensure that the hit registration in our game is as rock solid as it can be. And this is a, an ongoing thing for us as a development team. We're constantly putting time and effort into this area to try and make it as robust as possible. In the past, we've borrowed time from feature teams to address issues in the core experience, but it's always taken a back seat to the features that those teams are working on. In 2024, this is changing. We're securing a dedicated team. More opportunity. Listen, this is Andrew Freston. This guy's cool. I've talked too much. I, I want to see if you guys can detect any sort of like. Can he say that? Can he say this? He's trying not to laugh. I feel like. Really, he's trying not to crack up, my God. It's rock solid as it can be. And this is a an ongoing thing for us as a development <laughs> team. We're constantly putting time and effort into this area to try and make it as robust as possible. In the past, we've borrowed time from feature teams to address issues in the core experience. But it's always taken a back seat to the features that those teams are working on. In 2024, this is changing. We're securing a dedicated team to focus on the health of the game. Strike Team 2.0? The strike team's back. Nine out of 10 strike team is back. Let's go. Improvements to the things that matter most to our players as soon as they're ready as part of our regular monthly updates. This is gonna be a key focus for the team this year. We want your Sea of Thieves experience to be the best that it can be. Adding new loadout choices as part of upcoming seasons shows our commitment to making encounters between players a more dynamic and fun experience. But crucially, this all has to operate on a stable combat system. We know that there's still plenty of work to do here, but this remains a top priority for our team. March's update delivered Easy Anti-Cheat, an industry-leading anti-cheat solution designed by Epic. This solution evolves over time, keeping up with cheat developers, blocking them at every turn. This is really, though, just the first step at improving the player experience here in Sea of Thieves. We want to focus this year on making Sea of Thieves play better than ever before, whether that be improving. We would like to focus on making our game worse. I want somebody to say that one time, just as a joke. Just one time somebody... <laughs> just, it's obviously <laughs> what you're going to say. I just think it was funny when you hear it. I mean, everybody says that in any sort of movie. This movie coming out is the best one yet of the trilogy. Like, you're not going to be like, number three in the tril trilogy is probably slightly worse than number one, but it's going to be sweet. Let's watch it. The performance of the game across the variety of hardware it runs on, ensuring that it's a safe place to play with a focus on cheating, but also ensuring that a hit registration is as reliable as possible in all of your adventures out there in the sandbox. So that was all 12? Excuse, was that all of that 12 that we just watched, that entire thing? Yes? Okay. That's cool because I did not know that. I thought that was all stuff that was gonna be just added in piecemeal. So that's all there. That's pretty sick. I'm pretty happy about that. If we're gonna see all of that in season 12, that'll be a huge shakeup. All right, that's good. Let's keep going. We got two more seasons to go through. Take a look. So Captain Flameheart has been a staple and important character oh, of Sea of Thieves for many years, boys, appearing man. in her novels and appearing in her many tall tales and expanded fiction. With season 13, this brings the return of Captain Flameheart oh, to the Sea of Thieves. As Flameheart has been resurrected, so has his burning blade ship, and it's back in more monstrous and terrifying form than ever before. So we've reimagined it for season 13, and it looks incredible. It almost looks like an, a living entity itself. So traditionally, world events have been at set locations throughout the world. The Burning Blade is a little different. The Burning Blade mouth. is a ship, 
and therefore moves around the world. But the twist is, when you've defeated the ship, you have the option to board it and pledge yourself and your crew to Flameheart, enter into his service and become the crew of the Burning Blade. No way. Essentially becoming a player-created world event yourselves. So obviously we have to go in big with this one. At a base, it is larger and more formidable than any ship we've seen on the waves. This ship has 10 cannons. It has a statue room dedicated to Flameheart at the back. It has a balcony where Flameheart likes to take in the view every morning with his coffee. And most importantly, it's got a massive flamethrower at the front. Players will be able to pull a lever on their ship and fire two massive balls of fire out the front of their ship, which is Chase really cannons. interesting because we've never actually had an offensive weapon that's frontal facing before. So I think this is going to create some really interesting dynamic naval combat situations. So once you take over the Burning Blade, you are on this really powerful warship and you have a skeleton crew helping you as well. So even smaller crews have every chance of crewing the Burning Blade because the skeletons will come to your aid. So you could have skeletons repairing while you're on the cannons firing at enemies which is excellent. But it's not just about sailing around the world, which of course you can do. It's about completing orders in service of Captain Flameheart. So around the world, there'll be numerous skeleton camps. You'll notice the Reapers have been conducting excavations on the surface, and they've been dragging up all sorts of ancient artifacts and ancient secrets from below the surface. Underground, there's basically a chamber with a prism that the players can control to draw out constellations on the ceiling in order to help the ritual come to completion and get that knowledge of the ancients. Each of these temples contains the secrets of the ancient, secrets that Flameheart wants above anything else. And as part of taking control of the ship, you'll be able to sail around the world, visit these ancient temples deep below these skeleton camps, engaging new puzzle gameplay, discover treasures. But what you're really after is the Orb of Secrets, a new treasure artifact that Flameheart wants. Collecting these secrets will add tribute to the Burning Blade ship. Okay, hear me out. That Athena 2.0, the OG Athena, is that the ultimate steal on a tuck? Or are you, can you not tuck on this though because the skeletons will come after you? They've got to make a way. I'm telling you right now. They've got to make a way. Rare if you watch this video, which I'm assuming at least somebody on your team will. You have to make this tuckable somehow. I don't know how you have to do it with the skeleton AI on this ship. You've got to let people be able to tuck on this. Hold on. Keep watching. Okay, let me, watch, let me watch. The more tribute that you collect, the more value will be aboard the Burning Blade. But you will lose the Burning Blade if it sinks or when you choose to go and cash that tribute into Flameheart. So it's really up to you how long you think you can hold on to it with that risk reward because everybody in the world is going to be coming for you. They're going to know you're in there and know you've got high value. So it really becomes this dynamic player created world event with players versus players in the sandbox. So even though you can visit these skeleton camps while in control of the Burning Blade, it's not only tightly wedded to that new gameplay. Players can also visit them any time in their adventures. So should players visit these skeleton camps when they're not the crew of the Burning Blade, the skeletons won't be too happy that you've found a way inside these camps and you'll be engaging in a combat-focused encounter to discover its secrets. So you can still well, do really it without it. About so sorry, I kind of missed it. So that means you can do the temple still if you don't get the burning blade. Is that correct? Am I getting, is that right? That's cool. Cause I was thinking about it because before I was, cause I was going to be like, does this mean that you have to have the burning blade to do it? Is that going to like push people to do it? But I guess you can't just like content lock people that might not be able to handle it. So I get that too. Interesting. Okay interplay of the features and the way that they'll bring players together and combine to oh, create Oh, look at that. And when look at this brig just getting rumbled by this thing. So this has five cannons each side, is that right? 
So you have five cannons on each? And you're the crew of the Burning Blade who wants to protect it. And they're shooting the grape Everyone shot Everyone else them. who wants to take it down and steal that value. Everything in season 13 will bring you together. Hold on, I'm gonna watch it again because I split it up Shit. too much. Burning Blade, part. if it sinks, or when you choose to go and cash that tribute into Flameheart. So it's really up to you how long you think you can hold on to it with that risk reward, because everybody in the world is going to be coming for you. They're going to know you're in there and know you've got high value. So it really becomes this dynamic player created world event with players versus players in the sandbox. That's cool. So this even though good. you That's can really visit good. These everything in season 13 will bring you together. That's really cool. I think that's a sweet thing. Do you guys, do they, do you chat before I go into it? Do they mention, to say like a solo person is, gets it. How many crew members can you have from the skeletons? Does it scale less or more depending on your crew size? Do they mention that? Because that's going to be a tough balancing act. I, I don't know. So like, if you're a solo, you get five skeleton crewmates. And if you're a galleon, do you only get one? Does that make sense? Does it scale somehow per player? I'm interested to see how that might work. I guess we'll just have to wait. I don't want to speculate on that. But um, yeah, let me see some images of this again because I want to see the ship. So that's the concept art, which looks sweet. Let me see. You know what this kind of looks like, chat? I don't know if you've played other ship games. This looks like a junk, like a loot song junk. Does that make sense? You guys know what I'm talking about? Kind of got like a, looks like it's kind of like an Asian themed ship i don't know i don't know anything about the lore of that but it looks kind of cool this ship has oh, whoa, 10 whoa, whoa. what is this right here yo it has a driver cannon one two three four five yo that is sweet the driver cannon could be a big that's a big win that's really cool so four on each side and then the wheel. Yeah, that's really cool, actually. And it's higher. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. Is this cannon the same size as these? Or is this like one you can only shoot certain cannonballs out of? Interesting. Yeah, this thing's going to be a beast. So I think, I think in a, a good way, I feel like that this... Not that I'm saying they need to change all the other ships, but I think this is a good test run to see if something like this is, is good. This thing will definitely be OP. A good crew gets a hold of this thing, it's going to be impossible to sink, even if all the other ships are fighting it. What I'm hoping for is hopefully, hopefully people see this thing and try to team up against it. That's my my hope for like a community server driven event like that. Like you find somebody else, you're like, hey, we need to go take this thing down, right? So hopefully that's hopefully that's the case. I I would like to see multiple crews come together to try to fight this thing. Because there's no way you're losing this thing 1v1. I mean, well, I mean, I take that back. You know what I'm saying. It'd be very difficult. That's a good thing. It's a challenge. That's what I think is good in this game. You got you to gotta challenge people a little bit. Yeah, pretty cool. I think that thing's sweet. Let's see what season 14 is. And 13 will bring you together. So towards the end of the year, we have season 14. And while it's very early for us to talk about, we wanted to share some of their thinking here because it is totally aligned with this vision for what 2024 can be, this laser focus on the sandbox and mechanics that add to the variety of stories you can encounter in Sea of Thieves. Internally, we're referring to season 14 as Pirates of Mischief. Sea of Thieves has always had this playful, mischievous, and funny sense of humor. And with season 14, we're expanding on that. The two main Only areas launching. that we're exploring are new ways to stealth and new ways to cause mischief in the world. So I think a real stealth? aspect of the Sea of Thieves experience that we haven't dive too deep into previously is the idea of being a stealthy pirate. So when you think about stealthy God, CFPs he, dude, and enhanced- You know how many, dude, that's gonna split people up so much and a good people are gonna be like, eh, chucking so stupid. People are gonna be just so pissed about that. And then everyone else that wants to have fun in the game and be stealthy, because it's awesome, will enjoy it.
practicing that. Imagine being Sit able to guy. crouch and move around the world silently, or the ability to hang off the side of an enemy ship. When we were having these initial conversations about season 14, the first thing I thought of was the cardboard boxes in Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Could we allow players to climb into chests and if they choose, they can actually scuttle around with their little legs out the bottom. And also, if they choose to, you know, keep the ruse up, could other players come along and pick them up like a normal loot chest or treasure chest or whatever and take it onto their ship? So another cool thing that we've been working on is, is the blow dart, which is another new weapon that players can wield from the armory and use that to kind of More sneak aboard enemy ships and fire kind of these custom darts into players that will do different effects. So imagine yes. a blow dart that tracks whatever it sticks to, whether that's a ship, a chest, an item, a player. Ones that could potentially like lure skeletons to like a specific position so you can throw a firebomb in there or, you know, explode a gunpowder keg or darts that can trigger specific sound effects, which is quite evil and cunning where you could board an enemy ship and shoot the capstone and it sounds like it's dropping or shoot the ladders and it sounds like someone's climbing. <laughs> and then okay. thinking about some of the ways that we want to add more mischief to the world, one of these is the idea of traps. So much like the kind of blunder bombs or fire bombs, we've been thinking about them being this kind of throwable trap that players can kind of throw into the world. Think of it like a, like a spring trap that players can place on the islands to trap skeletons on a bounty or on a fort or they could place it at the top of their ladders to prevent players from boarding their ships and get caught in this trap. Along with these, we're also bringing a really exciting new tool, and it's the grapple gun, which is a So hold on, purpose. before we get to that, that sounds sweet. Okay, so listen. People can say what they want about the game, like where it came from, what it's done, what its direction. But those of you in my community know that like, sneaking around and doing like weird stuff is kind of what made this game i think like what blew it up i mean if you go back to like summit and i play together smoky those guys you know what i'm saying like that stuff really made the game different and unique and i'm super glad that they're leaning into it even more because that could cause like a second era of that right like that could cause like a second whole wave of content because for me personally you know that content's going to be nuts so even if i can just mess with people like i don't even care about killing them or taking their stuff but just just doing some stuff like that i feel like it's just it just writes content so super stoked about that i know that's not exactly going to be in the game anytime soon but the other stuff leading up to that is going to keep us occupied anyway. So, so far, I'm super stoked on this. Um, let's check out this grapple gun. It's funny because I had heard about this thing. I don't know too much about it. I was not expecting it to look like an eye reach. So, let's take a look. That rifle. So, it allows you to tra traverse the environment much quicker because you're able to grapple yourself up to a ledge, okay. for example. But you can also harpoon items and other players in. So some of the new cool uses we've seen from the grapple gun in our early playtests are, you know, players firing themselves out of the cannon towards another ship to try and board them and perhaps overcooking it and then using the grapple gun to fire it at the deck and propel themselves down onto it. Or jumping off their okay. ship to like grapple yourself up to a ledge, for example. But you can also harpoon items and other players in. So some of the new cool uses we've seen from the grapple gun in our early playtests are you know, players firing themselves out of the cannon towards another ship to try and board them and perhaps overcooking it and then using the grapple gun to fire it at the deck. And okay, so I'm assuming that this is going to be a weapon. So you're not like grappling onto somebody's ship and then start double gunning people. I could be wrong about that, but I have to imagine this has its own slot. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I think it's going to be sweet, personally. But, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll, this will shake up a lot of things. So, let's keep watching. I don't want to... Propel themselves down onto it. Or jumping off their ship to, like, an oncoming ship and then using the grapple gun to kind of 
grapple up and onto their ship so that they can board them and, and drop so their anchor sweet. or have a fight with them. To make sure that uh, the grapple gun is balanced, it does have ammunition. You'll have arrowheads, and these essentially break off when you successfully use the grapple gun, meaning you can't continuously keep grappling. There is a skill to using the gun successfully and accurately and efficiently. Okay, that's So when sweet. we think about 2024, we really think about I mean, getting to the very heart of what makes Sea of Thieves Like great. I said, again, I, I have to, I have to reiterate when we talk about it. I, I, I don't, I, I'm on board with anything. Like, like I said, they could have had this thing where it's like, you sprout wings and you can fly and throw fireballs. Like, I wouldn't care. Like, I, I think anything added to this, I'm just using that as an example. I think anything to this is great. Like, just add, just add things. Like, get in there, add stuff to the game, mix it up. Get rid of like the regular, you know, I'm one shot blunder busting you on the ladder every two seconds. Like you can't board. So you know what I'm saying? Like just, just mix it up. Like you need to do it. It needs to be done. Because if it's just left how it was, you know, people wouldn't be that interested in it. But you got to, yeah, just, just make it crazy. Like think of all like the cool plays and like things are going to, are going to happen. Like it's just going to be way different. And I think it'll be pretty sweet. So. I think they're probably going to wrap it up right here, but let me just take a quick That is your stories powered by that design philosophy of Tools Not Rules. Season 12, 13, and 14 are fully exploring that, giving you new options, new tools, and fundamentally new possibilities that make this game unique and special. I think when you look at the year ahead for Sea of Thieves, our plans for season 12, season 13, and season 14, it's kind of making the shift I, away from I can't wait these to know big how much kind of systemic does. changes to Sea of Thieves and returning back to the core of what makes Sea of Thieves so special. The Chad, do we know if... Are the knives a throwable, or is that also a weapon? Do you guys have any idea? Did they say? Also a weapon. So, so what happens in the example where they talked about where like a guy throws a knife at you and then you take it? And throw it back. But what if you don't have that weapon equipped? You guys know? You get one ammo of throwing that? Or are you just speculating? We don't know. I want to know what's going on with that. It was not said. Okay, we need to figure that one out. I feel like that's a big... I feel like that's a big part of how useful those will be. Yeah, I'm sure they're playing around with it. Dang, I don't know, I don't know what I would want from that. I guess it just depends how, like, strong it is. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll see. We'll see. I can voice opinions about that later because I really don't know how it's going to be balanced. So we'll have to watch. The heart of Sea of Thieves about giving players new tools to create new stories out there in the world. We're ultimately shaking up the meta, giving players new tools to learn and master. And I can't wait to see what combinations players start settling on before we shake it back up again. While everything that you're seeing today is still work in progress and possibly subject to change in some ways, we will be giving more insights onto how these things are developing as we come closer to launch for each of them. With the richness of all these new seasons and of course, PlayStation Pirates joining us as well, it is such an exciting year for Sea of Thieves in 2024. Yo, okay, that's pretty sweet. So, um... Thank you for joining us for the Sea of Thieves 2024 preview event. We hope we've enjoyed this sneak peek at what's coming throughout the rest of the year. There's still a lot more to reveal for these seasons, so keep an eye on the horizon as we'll have more to share closer to each season's launch. For more information and to keep up to date with what's new in Sea of Thieves, check out our social channels. So until our paths cross again, happy sailing, and we'll see you on the seas. So, all right, so 
Yeah, well, we got some stuff to talk about, chat. Um, we got some stuff to talk about, chat. That was cool. Oh, there's a post-ending scene. Did I miss it? Hang on. We got to go back. Is there a post-ending scene? It's a freaking owl. <laughs> what are we thinking about? Uh, what are we thinking about the new content? Season 12. New weapons. Rolling. So yeah, I, I think it's going to be sweet. I mean, so far, I mean, the chat seems pretty hyped. Everything I've seen on like social media channels or stuff you guys have been talking about, sounds like everyone's pr pretty hyped for it. So you know, you know how I always talked about... <laughs> This is just a, this is just a yes. But you know, I always talked about, um, sometimes I think fights take too long. I think the fights are gonna go fast now. I think you're gonna see the conclusion of fights much quicker, personally. And I don't think that that's bad. I don't think you're gonna get locked into these stalemates. The changes are cool, but it better be playable. Right. I hold caution anymore with the game. Yeah, because my biggest thing... My biggest thing, at least, like, over the past maybe year, year and a half, has been, like, you just get into these stalemates. And it's just... I don't really think it's that fun overall to be locked into, like, a combat that takes 30 minutes to an hour. Like, these fights are going to be ended pretty quickly, I think with all these new tools, which I think is better. So it's just gonna be about quick thinking, quick reactions. I think it'll be just be, be better overall, but we'll see. I mean, like I said, we gotta play it. One more thing, man, we could use the talking flame hard head in the sky trash talking in Rob's voice. Speaking to that, I got an idea. I got an idea, Vapor, off of that. Thank you for the 300 bits, I think you're right. Chat, hear me out. What if you had the burning blade and if you did a certain amount of activities, like say you were like, say you were racking up kills or say you were racking up treasure, what if it did project the flame art head over your ship globally and you could talk trash to people? What if you could make a server announcement with the flame heart ship to announce that you're looking to be challenged? Because I know it'll probably be on the map but as we know, a lot of the times people disregard the map. That's not really something exactly that they do. Pre-selected messages, correct. So like say you, you, you're you on the burning blade, you have a pre-selected message you can do, like come challenge me or something like that. And the flame heart head is over the ship at, at its location, just kind of re-reminding anyone that might be on the server that there's something going on, right? So, I think that should be a thing, or at least discussed. I think that would be pretty sweet. So, yeah. You can drop a supplies must be dwindling. You could do it mid combat. It'd have to be on a timer. It'd have to be on a timer, something that you earned, right? You wouldn't be spamming it. So you like, say you did X amount of kills, you got X amount of treasures, you built up a message for your flame heart ship that you could select from a pre-selected thing. Right? I think that would be awesome. So, if you guys are listening and use that, you're welcome for that idea because I think that would be sweet, personally. Obviously, it'd have to be very, you know, it's not something you would spam, but something that could be doable. Just to keep it going, you know, you gotta challenge your opponents a little bit, cordially. I think that's kind of where we're going with that. And then obviously they talked about season 14, which, um, you know, mischievous, which I think is smart with all the other good stuff coming out, like the game mechanics, then start making some mischievous stuff. Feel me? Like that stuff is funny. Like he was talking about the blow dart that makes noises or like they can trick people. I think that's sweet. 
I just really think there's going to be some really fun stuff with that. So I am excited for that season also. Because I feel like that is going to be the season of content. Not that the others won't be, but when you can start just kind of messing with people, it's just going to be funny. Like, it's just going to be hilarious. So, yeah, I think the whole thing is going to be pretty dope. And I think that they've kind of had a, uh, they've got their head on their shoulders now. I think that it's going to be a pretty sweet couple seasons moving forward. At least for me, I think personally, these are going to be three of the best seasons possible. Like, I love all three of those ideas for seasons. Um, I think they've kind of got all of the base level stuff in the game they wanted covered. And I think that it's just going to be a pretty good, uh, a pretty good step moving forward. Um, and when it, when is it coming out? Did they say once is one season twelve? Do we know? I don't think that I. Uh, I don't think I know. Did they say? Does it say on that video? April thirtieth. Five or six weeks. Wait. So yeah, overall, like I said, um, let me turn this music down just a touch. Like I said, chat, super stoked. Um, super stoked about it. I think it's gonna be sweet. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the YouTube video today. On the way out, don't forget to follow the social media, my Twitter, my Instagram. If you've not already, Please remember to hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Thank you all very much. See you on the next video.